Okay, it's a pleasure to participate in this important meeting. It's also a pleasure to present after my very good friend Pedro Martin from Canary Island. And I was just modifying my presentation because I, I listened to, to the question from the audience. And unfortunately, I have had this complication of embolization, which is very rare. And the main reasons when that happened is because sizing was not correct. But in the initial part of our learning core, we have this. Uh, so this was a case. You see that we positioned two pigtails to, to see the, if the alignment was correct. The valve selective was a 26, sorry, 27.5, but the sitting, the sitting was not really good. And here you can see that we implanted, the valve remained in place for a few seconds, and then there was symbolization. Remember, 27.5. So when this happened, when the embolization occurred little after, it's very important not to lose the wire from this position. Yeah, so it's not the topic of my presentation, but I understand the concern of the audience. I was mentioning that the sizing is very often the problem for embolization. So in this case, the CT was of not so good quality because the contrast with the regurgitation was moving. So as you can see, after implanting the first valve, which was 27.5, the, there was a slow movement to the ventricle. It's very important not to lose the, the wire in the ventricle. We could inflate a balloon in the valve. Normally they can go out because there is no calcium in the valve in pure regurgitation. And we could move the valve to the descending aorta. And once this was done, we decided to proceed with a, a 28% oversizing according to the, to the CT. So this was implanted in the standing aorta, but instead of a new 27.5, we selected a 30.5 valve. And this is the 30.5 that we could advance without any issue through the valve implanted in the standing aorta, which is the recommended strategy if this happened. And then we could implant this new valve. Very important, rapid pacing. And when the valve is deployed, very slowly we go back to regular uh, uh, heart rate. And as you can see, in this case, the valve remained perfectly in position and there were no other issues. So I, I have had the chance to do more than 50 cases like that. And I have only see, seen this embolization and another late embolization, which was probably uh, out very out of range, but it was a, a, a decision that had to be taken. So now I go to, to the actual topic of my presentation, which was the clinical evidence with my valve. The number of studies is growing very quickly. You can see several studies on intermediate sizes, in the uh, quantification of the arterial regurgitation, different comparisons, uh, retrospective comparisons with other valves, uh, studies in bicuspid. And then there are two prospective trials, landmark and compared, that I will mention briefly because results are not yet uh, published. So the matchable is a retrospective study that we performed comparing the two balloon expandable valves. It was published in HART. We participated in nine European centers in this study. It was patients treated after 2018, either with Edwards or my valve. These are the main investigators. Uh, we included only uh, tricuspid cases, no bicuspid cases, to uh, avoid confusion. And very importantly, we were focusing on 30-day outcomes, mainly in the morainamics, so gradients and regurgitation. But of course, we paid attention to all the clinical outcomes as secondary uh, outcomes. As you can see, there was a match score. The global population was 286 sapien 3 and 130 my bulk but we match for all the confusing factors regarding hemodynamics. So size of the anonus, degree of calcification, degree of eccentricity, left ventricular ejection fraction. Uh, and also through clinical variables, uh, mainly the, the surgical scores, the STS score and other clinical uh, variables. So after adjusting, there were no significant differences in main baseline characteristics of our patients. These are the baseline characteristics also in the electro electrocardiography with no differences in the degree in the number of cases with right bundle branch block. 
Uh, after adjustment, no differences in the diameters of the annulus, the area, the Agaston units, and the, the calcification in the LVOT. And also, after adjustment, no differences in left ventricular ejection fraction or other echocardiographic parameters. So these are the outcomes of the match court. They were all transfemoral cases. The depth of the prothesis in the LVOT was similar. We tend to predilate more often my VAL. There was a statistical trend. There were no differences in the procedural risks, including bad embolization, annulus rupture, coronary obstruction, tamponade. No differences, but importantly, no cases of these complications with my VAL and very few cases with Edwards. There were significant differences in the peacemaker rate being more favorable with my VAL. We will discuss this later. And there was a trend to better clinical safety and early, uh, sorry, sorry, clinical efficacy and early safety at 30 days in favor of the MyVal. Regarding gradients and aortic valve, you can see in this orange color, sepian brown is my valve. So after implanting, we can see that there is better gradients and better aortic valve area with my valve. Our hypothesis is that the intermediate sizes are playing a role here. And there were no differences in terms of aortic regurgitation. This is global regurgitation, central and paravalvular. There were no cases of moderate or severe regurgitation and only one case of severe regurgitation with sapien 3 So this was a very reassuring finding. Of course, it's retrospective, has some limitations as part the statistical methods but it, it was very reassuring to continue using this device in our patients. We have some doubts if that difference in peacemaker rate was real, so we did a central analysis of all the electrocardiographies of our patients, but uh, for also from several institutions, and not only with MyVal and Sapien, but also Evolute, Accurate, Portico, and Allegro. MyVal rate of peacemaker was 7.4 in this uh, uh, more than 1,000 cohort of patients, 13 for Sapien, 18.5 for Evolute, 9.1% for Accurate, 29 for Portico, and 22 for Allegra. So significant with all the self-expandable devices. And when we analyze the length of the peer segment, at this chart, there were no differences between the different devices and my valve, but there were differences regarding the QRS duration. So uh, after procedure, the QRS duration was longer with Sapien, Evolute, Portico, and Allegra done with my valve, and at the chart, it was only for the self-expandable devices except Accurate. We did the first registry on low, in low-risk patients, uh, and as it happens with all the devices, in this 100 cord of patients, the outcomes, the outcomes sorry, were optimal. We can see that there were no severe complications. The rate of post dilation was 4%, 8% peacemaker, one cerebrovascular event with almost fully recovery and no mortality at 30 days. Mean gradient after implantation was nine. There were no cases of severe mismatch. The, the re functional recovery was really, really good. And 4% uh, of the patients in this case had moderate regurgitation, but all the other patients did not have this problem. I advance very quickly this slide, but this confirms that in about 40% of our patients, we are using the intermediate sizes. So this seems to be very important. We are working in another project on commissural alignment. And now the, I know that next generation of MyVal will have a specific features for commissural alignment, but we were working with the current generation where we could identify where the commissors are thanks to this dual strut. This is very important, as you know, in case we have future degeneration for Basilica or Tabin Tabi, but there are some publications suggesting also that the, the gradients uh, can progress more quickly if we don't have commissural alignment. For this reason, we developed this project where we are able uh, to calculate the center line of the aorta and predict in this case is with an accurate, but we can predict how the commissors land and how many degrees we need to rotate the commissors to be aligned with native commissors. So in this case, 50 degrees. So we just need to crimp the valve knowing where the commissor is so we can rotate the system according to the specific orientation of the commissors in this patient.
We were able to perform this in 10 patients with no cases of moderate or severe misalignment, six patients without any misalignment, and four with mild misalignment. And this was recently published also in Jack Intervention in this consensus paper that uh, was recently performed within collaboration with the key opinion leaders in this field. I mentioned in the beginning that we have some ongoing uh, trials. One is Landmark. In the Landmark is comparing MyVal, Sapien, and Evolute. Uh, we are almost half of the way with this study. With the pandemic, it was really, really tough, the recruitment, but in 2021, the speed uh, of the recruitment has really increased. We are here in second place, trying to recruit as many patients as possible, but you can see that all centers are very active. And the other important trial compares MyVal uh, and Accurate Neo and MyVal and Sapien3 is a compare uh, study, the, this Danish, important Danish study uh, that was uh, stopped for a while, but now is ongoing and are recruiting patients and will provide further insights on the outcomes of the patient. And I want briefly to present the preliminary results of the Triton study in bicuspid patients that will pres be presented in London Bulbs. We included 382 patients treated with the last iteration of the devices, say Prince Ultra, Evolute Pro Plus, or MyVal, distributed uh, in a very similar proportion, one third approximately. Again, we perform a three match analysis of baseline characteristic, not only clinical, not only echocardiographic, but also the CT uh, eccentricity, degree of calcification, extension to LBOT, and also the type of bicuspid and valve sizing. This means that we only compare patients type zero with type zero and type zero similar gradients at baseline. So this is a, this led to a three groups of 80 patients with very, very similar characteristics. This is the adjustment, the baseline differences in orange and after adjustment. What we could see is that the uh, outcomes in the uh, unmatched population uh, were comparable, but uh, well, this is baseline, let's go to the, to the results. The device success in orange is my valve was uh, significantly better than with, with the other devices. This was also confirming the match score below and the early safety was superior, significantly compared with Sapien 3, not significant with Evolute. And this was confirmed significant against both in the match score. Again, the gradients uh, focus in the below image. In blue, we can see the gradients after my valve, 8.5, gradients after Sapien, 12.9, gradients after Evolute, 9.6. So the results are optimal, even when compared with supranular valves. And again, I think that this is because of the intermediate sizes. And in terms of residual regurgitation, Sapien 3 Ultra and Myval were comparable and the degree of regurgitation after Evolute was significantly higher, both, both in the match and the match cord. Finally, I want to stop much in mitral, but there is a growing experience. There are a couple of publications already on valve involved mitral with MyVal. The problem is that the sizing is not included yet in the app, in the app uh, from Bapat that we are all using. So, in our paper, we included this table where you can see which valve we should use with, with Sapien 3 or with my valve for each devices, uh, surgical devices implanted before. So this is already published and is available for all users. I will just very quickly show a case because I know we have some delay. Very important for us is this prediction that we are using. We exactly predict how deep we should go to learn how large is the Neo LVOT. So if the LVOT is very small, we can go a little bit higher with the implant and decide this precisely for our patients. Yeah. So I will just go to the conclusions. And and finally, so we are using also in pure regurgitation with extremely good outcomes and currently collecting patients for our results. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. It was a very wonderful talk. Thank you so much. Thank you.